Right, administer the cure at once. Yes, Captain. We're going to cut this out because it's so violent. Oh! Ahem. <clears throat> Bernard! Bernard, a veteran pilot who started in the private sector before joining the Rescue Corps. He's always brimming with optimism. We got him! <laughs> That's... I, w I was kind of expecting a soft lead-in. I just forgot that we had, a, we had a leafling to cure. <laughs> I was like, I'll, I'll have some time just to putz around and, and get back into the swing of things. It's been a long time since I recorded, but no, we... <laughs> Not only do we have a leafling, but it's the one we've been looking for, and I have to come up with a voice for him. <laughs> Bernard, I am happy to see that you are back on your feet, as opposed to your back, which is what you were on. <laughs> um, are you sure it's okay for you to be up and about already, Bernard? Play it cool, Dingo, play it cool. <laughs> I appreciate your concern, Dingo, but I am good to go. It's strange. Since is losing my leaves, I feel as light as a feather. Now, the next time I get abandoned in a cave, I should be able to escape all on my own. Huh? Uh, uh, what, what are you trying to say, Bernard? Uh, so he's mad at me for running away after all. Dingo. I thought he wouldn't remember that, Dingo. Oh, c nothing. Just a little joke. Good, good. Finally, all the members of the rescue corps are together again. Blah, ha, ha, ha. I hereby reinstate our primary mission, the rescue of Captain Olimar. Oh, come on. Come on. There are four... Z I... No. I'm not going to say it. No. That's it. That's it. LP's over. That, that, that's it. No. No more. That's it. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not doing it. <clears throat> you can't make me. It's a dumb catchphrase. Uh, okay, fine. Uh, ah! Copy that. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Gross. Uh, wow. Where did they find a rookie like you? So unique. You must be the secret weapon the captain's been talking about. <laughs> that that gap was so long that it changed my voice. Thank you very much for saving me. Excuse me, Captain. This may pertain to the subject of a certain Captain Olimar's whereabouts. I found a logbook entry that caught my interest. At long last, my goal to collect all lost SS Dolphin parts is nearly complete. According to the ship's radar, the remaining pieces are inside a giant structure. My life support system is reaching its limit. One last push now. Wait, could that mean? While searching using our newly discovered radar, we received a very strong SOS signal from inside a large structure. It must be coming from Captain Olimar. Commendable work. As always, the rest is up to you, Jeff and Ochi. We, the Rescue Corps, now being fully assembled and all of our niches are able to be executed with full efficiency, are unable to embark on this task. But you, a rookie, are perfectly capable of doing it for us. Blah, ha, 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 ha. Man, I'm not happy. What? I've never seen a dog wag its tail before. Usually whenever they look at me, they put it between their legs. Or I tie their feet together and put them in uh, into an oven or across a it. Has Ochi's tail always been so green? Wait. Oh, that's a good point. Hold up. Hold up. That's... That's... What? What? Why? I don't like that. Ochi. I still don't trust you. I like you, but I don't trust you. I saw the way that other dog looks at Leafling Olimar. 
Uh, what are we doing now? Hey, let's, let's talk to Bernard. Ooh. Hey, you're that rookie I've been hearing all about, right? Who am I thankful for you? I'm Bernard, the pilot of the one and only SS Cafeteria. I am deeply pleased to meet you. I'm also relieved to see that you are just as bright as the cap said. While I had leaves on the brain, my head couldn't stop thinking about Dan Dory. So listen, I need your help. I need you to save everyone who got leafified like me. Seriously, every last one. Who? it's no small thing, I know, but there are rewards in it for you. Believe me, I've picked up a whole lot of raw materials. I mean it. I'm counting on you, okay? Good luck, rookie. <laughs> You've rescued that many? Already? Nicely done, rookie. Here's some plastic. You certainly deserve that reward and more. Keep up the amazing work. He's so cool. His purple hair. Aviators. And he's waiting for me to press A. I didn't notice. But he still looks cool while he does it. He makes me feel not cool. Maybe I'm not. I guess, look at me. Am I cool? Are we cool, Ochi? Maybe we should look into that. Hey! What was your name? Puddle? Can you make me cool? I'm gonna update my look. I'm gonna be as just as cool as that captain. Oh, is this how we unlock styles? That's kinda neat. That may- maybe, I- I don't know. Do I change? Ah, oh, man. Hmm. You know what? No. I'm perfect just the way I am. I am Jeff Andonitz. It doesn't matter that I'm not... A ref my name isn't a reference to a dog breed. It doesn't matter that I am from Earthbound. In my mind, after the events of Earthbound, Jeff soared off to space, entered a time vortex, and came back. Also, very shrunken and not on Earth. Shut up! My headcanon makes perfect sense! Schnoz, save me. Please, if you will, let me look at things. I'm very good at it. Especially that one thing that I always desire to look at. Oh, wait, what is this called? No! No, go back. Olfactory sculpture. You can't, see, you can't see the artistry at work here with your eyes, but take a deep breath and your nose will behold the power and beauty at once. One whiff and your heart will light up. Surely this gorgeous olfactory sculpture belongs in an art gallery. Sphere of Beginnings. When I stare at this sacred sphere, phrases like fresh start, new life, and clean slate float before my eyes. The sphere of beginnings is revered for its power to open doors and sprout fresh opportunities. It reminds us that a new chapter is always just a page away. Sphere of Vitality. Like those of us today, the ancient civilization here prized good health, but it was harder to come by in the olden times, and so this ore became a powerful charm for bringing vitality to the young and old alike. Even now, I feel more alive just by looking at it. Sphere of Truth! Behold the sublime sphere. A, sh a shape this flawless does not exist in nature. And so, since ancient times, this orb as and others like it have been treated as sacred by the civilization here. Each sphere has its own meaning. This one represents truth of the deepest kind. Stellar Extrusion. Is this fruit or a shooting star that's fallen to the ground? One taste and the answer is yours. Better yet, cut the star into slices and enjoy yourself a fruity constellation. How heavenly. I like star fruit. It's a, a unique taste. It's, it's almost like grape and pear, maybe, if I can make that stretch. But the consistency of it's weird. It has these weird ridges in the center that make it... I, I'm not a tech- I, I, I guess I am a texture guy, and it's just odd to eat. Fishy bed. It's said that life first came from the sea, so it's no surprise that we are so deeply connected to water. Thus this bed, with its fish-shaped design, is meant to lull one to sleep with the visions of floating. Just lay down, and let the dreams wash over you. 
Fish bed snack. As far as I could tell, this is some sort of fish atop some sort of... white... S stuff. <clears throat> the specifics don't matter as much as the taste, which is... good. Nothing too fancy or ostentatious, just the right of ba- just the kind of back-to-back -back basics flavor profile that we all crave now and again. Amplified Amplifier. Your voice is weak. Knees weak. Arms are heavy. Mom's spaghetti. It does not carry. No one notices you. If this is true, then this item is for you. Starting today, you are a gym teacher. You will never be ignored again. Thrill Ride Track. When a sharp turn catches you by surprise, what do you do? Slam on the brakes or throw open the throttle? No matter which choice you make, you're in for a hot, pounding thrill ride. Best to grab for that seatbelt if you've got one. If you don't, then this is called the... The... Kill Ride Track. And you'll be dead. Turn of Events Track. What a profound curve this track here exhibits. It's not so deeper, different from life. Sometimes you think you know where you're going, but then a, there's a curve in the track that takes you for an unexpected ride. There's no getting off this train, so sit back and enjoy the surprise. Unless the surprise leads to a kill ride track, in which case you will be dead soon, so say your prayers and call your loved ones. You will, you will be dead soon. Relent the spear. In times of old, competitors would face off against one another to see who could throw this enormous spear the furthest. It was said that the only way to take the winner's spot was to train as relentlessly as the spear flies. That is to say... Wow, this is a long one. Uh, competitors had to give their all to the spear training. Nothing less than total focus, total dedication, and total confidence would do. Those who, give their all found, who, those who gave their all found that they could throw the spear very far indeed. Soul Reverberator. The implications of this technology are quite frightening. Not only does it broadcast music played by a musician, but pieces of the music's musician's own soul. We always knew they put their hearts and souls into their songs, but this takes it to a whole new level. Judging by the completion of this, we're probably just over halfway through the game. Which, in the worst and best feeling in the world, that makes me profoundly sad. Which means I'm loving this game and every moment of it. Please tell me about the monsters you found. Now that we are in private. <laughs> the groovy long legs. Personally, I would have gone with raving long legs, considering the raging long legs exists, but sure, the groovy long legs. Pseudoarachnia. Disco petty discopedes? Disco petties? Disco petties. <clears throat> With mesmerizing lights that pierce through the darkness and a low groove that stirs your soul. How can you not get your dance on? Is it a creature or a machine? Who cares? As everyone can join this party. A world of caution though. Be careful you don't dance right under one of its feet. Um, uh, no, I'm not gonna talk about you. No, I didn't mean to do that! I was trying to save him for the end. You know what? I, I'm still going to. I lost the reminder, but I'm not gonna look at you. I hate you. The Skeeter Skate. Clean water is a necessity for this water walking sweetheart, and a lot of it at that. It, in water soiled with oils, detergents, or other pollutants, it could lose the surface tension that supports its specially evolved feet and drown. This is an extraordinary creature that could only exist on such a water-rich planet. We have a lot of things to get to through, wow. Aristocrab offspring. 
It pokes its little eyes just a bit out of the sand and stays very still, waiting patiently for us to come by. Even if we know they're hiding there, it's best to act surprised and give them a good shout of alarm. That's the best way to help them feel successful in their endeavors. Hermit Cromad. Here we have one of the cleverest of creatures. It has many different nest holes that all connect underground. Oh, that's why we had we had multiple holes for the same crom hermit cromad. Okay. Using this network, it can move from one hole to, an uh, to another and sneak up on prey or evade predators. A smart little darling indeed. <laughs> the Crusted Rump Pup. With a red carapace curved like a jaunty sun hat and a tail sporting vivid yellow tufts, this critter is a natural illustration of good fashion. But its face and personality exhibit only true ferocity. It will open its mouth wide and charge you with alarming speed. This juxtaposition of artistic exterior, coupled with an aggressive attitude, is intriguing. Toady Bloister Molly! Cute little marble-like eyes, a smooth undulating body, a big curvy mouth, and a tongue that extends and separates into six parts. Gill like fruit from a plant. Sit a moment and take it all in. Sometimes it's fun to simply appreciate how a creature can do so that can do so much damage can still be an adorable addition to our universe. I love Molly. I also didn't pay attention to how many Pikmin her strawberry gave. It was a lot in Pikmin 2. I want to say off the top of my head, 30? I could consult the tome, but I'm going to rest on my laurels on that. I am confident that I'm right. I might check in a loading screen. Winged Pikmin, which threw me off for a second because this is showing the... Watch my have it. The... The... Uh... The... 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 the, the this. The souping snitch bug. Winged Pikmin. These peculiar li little flyers look like they're wearing goggles. Don't be put off by their odd appearance, though. Places that seem like dead ends, such as treacherous roads, lakes, swamps, and sheer cliffs, are nothing to them when they're not carrying anything. With a few flaps of their tiny wings, they flit through the air like fierce little fairies. I'm not gonna read him! And I'm not gonna read him, the one I'm surrounding, that I'm not gonna mouse over, because I'm petty. Ha! The triple punch! Ha! <laughs> it's the same animation, too! I love it! We're grabbing the idler's alert. I'm gonna have to remember to use it, that's the only downside of it, but... In, in essence, with... especially last episode... With us having spent so much time with idle Pikmin just everywhere, this seems really good to me. We're gonna try it. And I'm going to immediately assign it to a hotkey as well. With Ochi spending more time on his own, I think it's time to l give him... Rabies? <laughs> now that the rescue corps is properly assembled, we can finally put our minds and efforts towards our main mission. Despite the delays, I'm confident our search for Olimar will be nothing if not successful. Hopefully, this world brings him to us on a silver platter. And if it does not, I have some in the cabinet. Oh, are we already getting a new area? Oh, I pr probably should have expected that considering they all but said that. Certainly this isn't the final area, is it? <sighs> but no. We're going back to the Serene Shores. We're at least going to spend one more day here. I, I am totally fine with us bouncing around. In fact, I kind of prefer that because otherwise we just see one area, nothing but an area, and then move on. Um, but I feel like I kind of got trounced by the Serene Shores. It was anything if not serene. And I would like to... Make it serene by killing everything there. So let's go and do that! And now, 
43 minutes into my recording session, I could talk about the loading screen because they actually just patched this game and that was one of the big things that they changed. There's now a loading indicator. It's kind of crazy to me, and I know we take this for granted, but let's just, just think about how nuts that is. People who play this game from here on out, from this moment onward, will never know that there wasn't a, a, lo a loading bar unless they specifically look it up. That's just kind of cool. You know, it's 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 almost like we get to experience the beta of a game before, like, live. We're, we're all beta testers in this grand hobby we all share. Okay. What am I... What am I doing? Because we now know that there, there are tides in this place. Um, this is a base. In fact, this is where we started out. There's a gate here, which I actually forgot about. I somehow didn't register that. I think what we... Uh, I think what we should do is explore the sand castle until low tide happens, jump down here, maybe do this cave, and then clear whatever this is. There's there's a blockade here that, in my opinion, probably leads to a boss. It just gives me that vibe. Maybe that's Pikmin 3 talking. That's, that's kind of my plan. Conquer the castle, storm the castle, go to the cave, and go do this. Or maybe do this, and then the cave, just because order of operations and Dendori stuff, you know. That's probably a boss, too. Let's do that first. Um, who do I want? I probably want blues. I probably want rocks. And I probably want pinks. Or not, why did I say pinks? Those are <laughs> not pink. They're not the opposite on the color wheel to pink, but they're pretty... They're not pink. <laughs> they're ice pikmin. Sheesh, pal. What are, on earth are you smoking? What is this? Oh. Oh, well, that's neat. I found the blue onion. And to be honest, this is the coolest place to find the blue onion. I love this. It's a little pool. It's like a, it's like a little tarp pool. That's awesome. I, now that I'm saying that, how, we didn't really discover the blue Pikmin in a cool way. We just found them in a cave. And then we found their onion later, and it just happened. This is like, this is almost, oh, drained the pond as well. Huh. This is almost like the intended way to get blue Pikmin. And I rather like it. It's just a little, a little pool at the top of a sand castle. castle. Some kid thought they were a genius, which first off, to scale, this is a crazy sand, I've never made a sand castle like this, although, I can't say I've made many sun ca sand castles in my life, but this is this is a sand fortress. I'm impressed. Okay, so we have we have this. I need to start splitting my party better. I feel like because just because of some of the awkwardness, because of some of the awkwardness with the controls, I don't split my party as much as I should. Crap! Ah! I, for a brief moment, my mind, you'll see that I froze there for like a couple of seconds, a couple of crucial seconds where I, I had two thoughts enter my mind. First and foremost, I'm going to press, I, I literally took my thumb off of the control stick to hit dodge left on the D-pad as though this were Pikmin 3. It is not Pikmin 3, but then I thought, oh, <laughs> all I need to do is use C stick left and dodge to the left, and this is not Pikmin 2 or 1. And <laughs> come on. I cannot catch a break. Rock Pikmin are great against Arist Crabs because they can break the claws. We actually don't have. Ooh, Ochi, Ochi, Ochi. Can you do this can, for me, please? Can we. Go down there. <laughs> and then I'll switch. Man, that didn't work out. Come on, guys my four Pikmin, and I will do this as well, and I'll switch. Our goal, as as I said, is to conquer the sand castle. This is a slope, so I can go down. I can reunite with my crew. This is another play way to access the, the shore. It's very pretty. I need to remember to, to catch a glimpse of the sunset again, because that was breathtaking last episode for the like two seconds that I remembered to, to see it. Puffer fish down there. It's you know, we've, I, I said this last time, 
it's rare that we get to go to the ocean. And I, I love all the little locales. I've talked about this many times about how Pikmin gives you an appreciation of the smaller... This is kind of traver traversable. Can I platform this? Hold up. This seems very glitchy. I don't know if I... I don't think I'm intended to do this. That's very weird. I can get to the grapes down there. That's that's neat. But I kind of would want to do that at low tide. Just because some of the enemies are high and dry. Okay. Where am I going? Where am I going? It says there are a couple... There's a treasure right next to me. Where... Is it under me? It's probably under me. It is under me. I need to get to, uh, I need to get to that. Okay, so there's a treasure there. So I think other than this egg, uh, Ochi, you don't take water damage? I don't know. You're fine. Good job. Other than this egg, I think we're... And the egg is harmless. That's one objective complete. It costs many lives for really no real reason. But it's now done. The sandcastle has been conquered. I can raise my flag on it. And now we're going to go over to that cave. Uh, I went up there. I can go ahead and grab this to offset some of the Pikmin I've lost. I've still lost so many ice Pikmin. It stinks. And it's it's all my fault. I mean... Okay, I'm, I'm going to... Caves down there. I'm going to make one excuse. One excuse only. And it's that... The, the boulder last episode? First off, I saw the boulder. I reacted to it like I had a thought. I, I saw it was going down. We hadn't seen a boulder go down the hill yet. And so my thought was, oh, well, let's get this uh, wrong button up on the D-pad. See how this works. Like, I had the thought that... And they're on their way. That's awesome. Okay, I had the thought, with the boulder, that it was coming down the hill. It was coming down... Ooh, actually, hold hold the phone. I, I really want to linger on this. We're about to go into the cave, so it really doesn't matter much that I linger on this. Time's paused. So, we are right here, right? I see the boulder coming down, and I think there is just an armor cannon beetle larva right there, shooting a boulder down. It's gonna hit this and break. So, first off, I think there's no way it's going to swerve in a... Basically take a 90-degree turn and hit me. There, that was not in my wildest dreams. And then secondly, I didn't really think about this conch... I didn't really think about this consciously, but I did have the thought. Dismount. Switch. Um, I, I want dismount. I, I want the Pikmin. Disband. If you look at that slope, and we're going to end up walking to the slope anyway to get to get these pick, get this treasure. There are no lines. Normally, whenever they do that trope, because it is a trope in this game or in this franchise to have the boulders rolling down the hill, and you have to get to them. To do that, normally, you put skid marks on the ground to give an indication, or you pre-fire a little bit so you see the boulder coming long before you have to dodge it. Neither of those two things happened. And then I saw the skid mark. I didn't see the skid marks, so I didn't really think I needed to do anything. That was almost very unfortunate. And then, I, it, by the time I realized, it was just too late to dodge. I don't have a C-Stick, I don't have a dodge whistle. Which we might get, if uh, I could see the, either of those... Well, probably not the, the C-Stick, but the dodge whistle being an upgrade. By then, it was just too late. And it was unfortunate, it happened. I'm not gonna say that... I'm not gonna say that it was necessarily the game's fault, because I will take blame for mistakes that I make. Especially when it comes to Pikmin, but... It just, it stinks. I wasn't expecting the sharp increase in difficulty, and that is a method by which they could have done the same trap and not have it been difficult at all. Okay, that was very long-winded. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for this to get in. 
As soon as our, our Sparklium goes up, I will mash A on this and enter, wasting no more time. It's about to hit low tide, and... 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 Come on. There we go. The Seafloor Resort, which sounds awesome and looks beautiful, actually. What, a be what beautiful scenery. When I'm surrounded by water, I can't help but feel at one with the sea. Sadly, there aren't many places to land in here, so non-swimming Pikmin aren't able to do much. At least I got to pretend I was on vacation for a little while, right? It is a... Oh, jelly floats? I hope they make the same noise. Please, 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 please. I love those things. Uh, those suggested Pikmin look fine. I'm running really low on ice due to my own mistakes, but we have 30, and we're going to take them in. 